Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, this is Alex Bennett. You can't see me yet. You know why? Because I've got my hands over my eyes, so you can't see me. Uh, but this show goes on until uh, midnight uh, Eastern Daylight Time, and uh, we will get to our Citizens Panel, and we'll get to the video visage of me. But of course, we got to talk to an old friend tonight because... He helps us talk for a half hour and say something meaningful. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, Larry Bubbles Brown. Now, somebody, somebody last night said they wanted to have a, uh, uh, you know how today they have uh, like audio clips that you can use to use as the ringtone on your phone. Right. You know, and whatever. And they said they would really love to have one of you saying hooker. <laughs> and neither of us, neither, and, and the audience wasn't laughing. They didn't know what it was about. And um, I, uh, uh, so so for that woman who wants a ringtone, would you say the word hooker? Hooker. <laughs> okay, there that's you go. Impressive. That's for Renee. Do, hooker. Do, 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 I think that's the way it was said when we did the uh, show out here with you. Do, do it one more time. Hooker. <laughs> now you have to explain see it's all in context like he used to have like one word jokes like butter do your butter butter <laughs> now why was butter a joke butter was a uh, joke that your old friend it was a punchline to an old david feldman joke yeah and we thought the joke was so bad, and the way he, the way he said butter, we started saying butter. And it, suddenly, every comic in San Francisco was just saying, instead of saying hello to each other, you go butter. <laughs> and it, to this day, people still say butter. Now, do you remember, do you remember the joke? The joke was... Because I do. It was about someone who, had, someone who was very fat that was doing cocaine. Yes, and the so line... What was his cocaine cut with? Butter. <laughs> but who was, who was the fat guy? I'm trying to remember. I think it was maybe Monty Hoffman. I have no idea. Monty Hoffman, no. It was somebody national. It was, uh... Yeah. But what's he, what's he, what's he, what's he cutting his, uh, his Coke with? Butter. Butter. You know. Uh, and, and it was one of those jokes, it was one of those jokes you tell where the punchline is walked into. Uh -huh. You know what I'm talking about? It wasn't just like, what's he cutting his Coke with? Butter. Butter. <laughs> yeah. So, so you, you, you would then, out of a clear blue sky, just on the radio show, on, in, on stage, just go, butter. Yeah. If I, if I drew a blank, I just butter. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know every comic was doing it. Yeah, everybody. That's, they, everyone would greet each other that way. Yeah, yeah. People, people still post it on Facebook. <laughs> I'm like, every time I go on Facebook, John Gonzo, John Means always has a picture of butter. He just puts butter. <laughs> <laughs> so it's 30 years later, it's still rolling around. Now how is he doing? You know, he was, do you know what, what his, his claim to fame is? He was the first comic I ever had on my radio show. The first? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think Slayton came second, if I'm not mistaken. But I was at the KML, and somebody said, uh, this comic would like to be on your show. And I said, what's his name? He said, Dr. Gonzo. I said, oh, well, let's do it. You know. And he became, I think, the first comic that was ever on my radio show in San Francisco. Wow. And then my boss said, oh, you like having comics on? Hey, there's this comic I know. He's really good, and he's a nice guy. I like him a lot. I said, what's his name? He said, Bobby Slayton. So Slayton came on, and then I said to Slayton, I said, know any other comics? He says, I know a guy named Jeremy Kramer. 
You know, and and one thing led to another. Before I knew it, I was up to my ass in comics for the next eleven years, twelve years of and my you, life. And that started the comedy boom here. Yeah, yeah. I I you know, um, if I hadn't been there, the comedy boom would have happened anyway. Is Probably my, is, would have, but you theory. definitely accelerated it. Well, I certainly gave it a platform, okay, to grow. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was. Um, yeah, it was a platform to grow. But the thing is that if people say, like, well, you know, if the Beatles hadn't come along, we would have never had all the music, blah, blah, blah. And I went, no. Something would have happened because there was time for a seed change, and it was just luck. They were just lucky enough to be the catalyst. And, yeah. you know, I was lucky enough in that seed change in San Francisco where all of a sudden it became Comedy Town USA to be a catalyst in all of that. So, you know, it was just pure luck on my part. You know, I, it's not like I saw an opportunity or anything else. I just wanted to fill up three, four hours a day with something, you know. And the comics would come in and fill up at least a couple hours of it. So, um, um, you know, I yes, my show was important to the comedy scene in San Francisco. But if I had never happened to that town, something else would have. You know, You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Because it, 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 the comics were already there. They had all migrated to San Francisco because there was a viable comedy scene. And I simply gave it voice, all right? Gave it a public voice. Um, you know. But man, the comedy scene back then was just, I, I can't begin to tell you. How, it was pretty incredible. Uh, I, I didn't know Gonzo was the first. He's still around. You gotta, you gotta talk to him. Is he still doing comedy, or is he? You know, he moved back. He moved, got out of it for a while, moved back to Midwest, opened a restaurant. And now he's now he's starting to do comedy again. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know if you can go back and do it again now. You know, I I at least a comedy comics from that age. I think you. Ha- I think it's a, a, a job you have to do when you're young. It, mm-hmm. it, you know, if you're doing it when you're old, it's because you were doing it when you were young. I mean, the guys we think of as older guys who are doing comedy who just came up in recent years, like a Lewis Black. When I was interviewing Lewis one day at uh, Sirius XM, he said, "You know, I was on your show in San Francisco." And I said, no. He says, no, I was, I was on your show in San Francisco. And I said, like this? He says, no. No, I was, a, you know, have you ever noticed that comics? You know, mm-hmm. he said, I, I, I only learned this style. I can't remember who told him, but said, if you want to be a success, start screaming in your act. Start being in everybody's face in your act. He said, mm-hmm. and that'll be successful. He said, but, you know, the stuff you're doing, you'll be just moderately successful. So he started screaming. He started doing that outrage thing, and he said it paid off. You know? Well, that kind of makes sense when you think of Kenneth and Goldthwaite. Yep, yep. Well, the, part of the reason is, and, and I've said this all, quite often, is that nobody wants to follow a screamer. Mm-mm. So you're going to be the opening. You're going to be the headliner, whether you like it or not. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, they, uh, people said that two things you don't want to follow, some guy who screams through his act and some guy who plays an instrument. Right. <laughs> yeah, they're very hard to follow. You can't follow. So they, so they automatically, immediately become headliners. Um, and uh, But, uh, no, Lewis told me, he said, that that was what I learned from somebody was to start screaming. And so he said, I started becoming outraged. And sure enough, all of a sudden, my, my whole star ascended. God, that really changed. Yeah. But, uh, he did well. So I think maybe at this age, you probably should start screaming. <laughs> of course, at this age, I probably have an aneurysm. So. Yeah. It, 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 uh, in case people have never seen you, well, they can go. You know, they can go online and go to YouTube and look up Larry Bubbles Brown, and they'll see you're set on Letterman. Yeah. Um, uh, and and um, it was um, 
and it was a great set too, by the way. I mean, well, thanks, the, the well. second one you did, the first one you the did was terrific one. too. But the one they'll see is the second one that you did twenty years later because yeah. you're you're not aggressive at all. Well, no, <laughs> they said you know you were really good last night, Larry. Uh, give us a call when you got another uh, good uh, five minutes. And Larry called him twenty years later. <laughs> twenty years later, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to be pushy. <laughs> Uh, and that second set, I you know, you were wonderful. Oh, thanks. Uh, you, well, the crowd, the crowd, it'd be hard not to do well. The crowd's pretty lit up there. Well, so. you see, what you never sold, here's what you never sold. You want to know what, where your career went wrong? Can I tell you now? Yeah, I'd like to know. Okay. Where your career went wrong was you should have sold your face. You know, when you did the Letterman show, I said, he's funnier close up than he is on a stage. Because you can see the face. You can see, you know, it takes up the whole screen, practically. And you can see the expressions on his face. And it works. And that, that was... Well, that's what, what I, someone used to tell me, because I always thought I did, like, some mugging and stuff, but I never, it never seemed to show up in the club. Well, it never but showed up in the club because it, it, yeah. the reason it doesn't show up in the club is you're on a stage and the closest person to you is watching your entire body and the person right. in the back row is basically seeing a dot on the stage. And that your your comedy played best in close-up. My theory. Oh, well, I better... I'm uh, sorry I, I didn't impart this to you when you were younger. <laughs> if I'd known that, I would have gone on stage with a magnifying glass. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but I mean, you could have say could have kept me out of poverty. Yeah, you. Uh, you well, you've also never been aggressive either. No, no, I got into comedy to. Uh, some people, most people, go in it to get famous. I got in it to uh, escape a day job. I I got to escape. I just wanted to get away from a day job and make a little money and be left alone. Yeah, but I mean, you've never been a- aggressive about it. I mean, there's some people, no. as I say, I talk, I like to talk about Durst as an example, who wakes up in the morning and starts making the calls, you know? Yeah. Uh, he's he's aggressive with his career, and he he's knows... Not, a, not in your face aggressive, but like you said, he's he works really hard. He he's works on phone it. And- yeah, he works it. And, uh, you know, I mean... Uh, I think I heard him one day that day when we were doing our our, our interview. Uh, he got a call or something. He had to take it. And he, I hear him with the guy, and he goes, "Well, you know, I got to do this day because I have this date open, but I may not have it open long." You know, I mean, he was like selling it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, you know, that that's why to this day Durst is working a lot. Yeah, uh, he hasn't become nationally famous like i think he should because uh but but he certainly is a is a working successful comic you know i mean he makes a nice he makes a decent living yeah right? yeah that too and he doesn't have any kids which helps uh that will save you a lot of money it'll save you a lot of money you wouldn't be living in that small apartment if you had gotten had no. kids and gotten married right <laughs> and you, and you'd be worrying about you'd probably be selling real estate right now. And if I think I'm unhappy now, <laughs> screaming, <laughs> screaming kids, money going out the window. Oh my God! Well, are you are you an unhappy person, Bubs? I don't think so. No, I'm a closet optimist. Maybe I don't know. A closet optimist. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great way of putting. It. See, I'm a miserable person. I'm unhappy <laughs> all the time. Drives my I don't wife. Know about that. No, it drives my wife nuts. You know, and being out of work for for what four years now or something like that um, uh, makes me even more miserable because I like to work. You know, I do this. Yeah, you should I, be working. So. Well, well, I do this little show every night because this is my form of doing it. You know, continuing to do it. And I, uh, sometimes I say, oh, I'm going to quit doing this. I am tired of doing this. I'm tired of, you know, of the smaller audiences than I was used to having in radio. And I'm tired of uh, of uh, having to post the shows every night and do stuff like that. And then my wife said, if you weren't doing it, you'd be miserable. I said, I'm yeah. miserable now. <laughs> you know. So. Well, we got to stay busy. Yeah. Do you find that in your old age you're becoming a curmudgeon? 
Oh, definitely, yeah. Very cranky. Very cranky? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I'm cranky, too. I'm, I'm becoming that guy, you know, that used to yell, get off my lawn. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you know, and, and I understand why now. Because I don't like kids on my lawn, okay? That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, you know. Getting old ain't for sissies is what uh, Betty Davis said. So uh, what do you think of the world around us right now, Bubs? Are you happy with it? Uh, I think it's overcrowded. I'd like to see the population go down a lot. Yeah. More parking spaces. More parking spaces. Uh, politically, the, wor- the world's always a mess politically. I don't know where it's heading to, but uh, it's probably not good. You know, good. Pe- people say, oh, this is the, this is the worst uh, I've ever seen. I think maybe Trump is the worst president we've ever had because he's just stupid, you know? He doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, he's an amateur at it, and uh, he takes everything personally. All right, so he's he's probably the worst president as a president that we've had. However, we have lived in bad times. Vietnam War period, as an example, mm-hmm. under Nixon. How terrible was that? And then you go back to the fifties when I was growing up. You had the 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 uh, uh, the red purges in our country. You know. With the blacklists right. and things like that, I've seen I've seen worse, I really have, you know. And the uh, depression sounds like it wasn't not fun. Yeah, the only thing that scares me about Trump is I have his friend Jack Garfine, who's seven uh, eighty six seven years old, and was in eleven concentration camps. And I said, "What scares you about Trump?" He says, "I've seen this all before." Oh really? Yeah. So that scared me, you know. Um, it it it's it, I don't know. It's just amazing. So anyway, but uh, uh, um, no, I just uh, I watch a lot of television. Um, watched a great documentary the other day on Malcolm X, um, who I've always liked. I always thought he was kind of a hero of mine because he was really? like, wow. he, well because he was uncompromising. You know, he said, you know, he, he put down Martin Luther King saying, you know, this is a guy who takes money from white people for his causes. He says, how can he do anything right for black people if he's taking white people's money? And that's the kind of person I am. I would have said the same goddamn thing. And I've said the same thing about Martin Luther King all my life that, uh, you know, that I never considered him a, a major hero. In, in the black movement, I considered him a compromiser. Mm-hmm. And yet he gets a birthday, right, that we have to celebrate, and Malcolm X gets a fucking street in New York City. Yeah. <laughs> you know? When Malcolm X was the guy who, who, who really was, he, you listen to these speeches, this was a documentary in which they didn't have any narration. They just simply did it through his speeches. And um, it was just amazing, the things he was saying. I got to see that. That sounds fascinating. And at the end, they play Ossie Davis doing his eulogy at his memorial service. And it is one of the most passionate speeches I've ever heard in my life. Just beautiful. Just beautiful. And he ends it off by saying, Malcolm was a prince. He was our black prince. You know, it was, it, 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 he, it, uh, and so it really pissed me off when I sat there watching and saying, this guy just has a street, because I live a block away from uh, from Malcolm X Boulevard. Um, it, I live a, he, he gets a street in Harlem, and that's it. We should be celebrating Malcolm X's birthday. He was the guy who was really speaking to the black community. What? Wasn't there some conspiracy theories about his assassination, too? Well, it, well, no, he was, well, there's always got to be a conspiracy theory about an assassination because by its own definition, uh, an assassination is a conspiracy. Um, mm-hmm. uh, they, they believe it was Elijah Muhammad um, because he was calling out Elijah Muhammad, who was the head of the uh, the, the uh, uh, 
what do you call it, the Nation of Islam, the black okay. Muslims, as yeah. we call them. Um, uh, he was the head of it, and he said he left. He made, a, he made a big deal when they finally firebombed his house. He said, well, I've never said this before, but the reason I left the Nation of Islam was because he had eight children out of wedlock by eight different underage girls. And he said, that's why I left the Nation of Islam. And shortly after that, he was killed. Okay. All right. Do you need a conspiracy theory here? <laughs> we don't need a Warren report for that. We don't need a Warren report for that, exactly. Uh, but, I mean, he was, uh, he was, he was, it was brilliant. So I just, I just think that that's the injustice in this world, that a guy who should have his birthday celebrated has got a lousy street in, in Harlem, you know, that everybody still calls Lenox Avenue. So uh, it, it's just, you know, it's, I hate what I hate about New York City are these honorary streets they give people mm -hmm. in New York because uh, they're streets of people you never heard of in your life, like, one block between like 6th Avenue and 5th Avenue and what used to be 56th is now called something else. All right? Just the block. And when I, block. when I walked by, by a block and it was Cousin Brucie Way. <laughs> Cousin Brucie a, was a disc jockey in New York City. He still is. He's not even dead. I mean, you would think you'd name a street after a dead person, right? He's no. got a block. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin, uh, Cousin Brucey Way or Kevin Brucey Lane or Street or whatever. And uh, it's down this, right? It's between, um, oh, it's something like uh, um, uh, 48th and, and, and 6th Avenue. It's, like, it's not like it's off on a side street somewhere in Queens. You know, Cousin Brucey Street. <laughs> I'm going, what the fuck? He wasn't even the biggest disc jockey in New York yeah. City. I think we need an Alex Bennett Boulevard. Hi. Yeah. But that was the guy that probably woke up every morning and hit the phones. You know, so that's why he's got a street. <laughs> name a street after me. <laughs> you know, if we're going to name streets after people, let's, you know, Henny Youngman Boulevard, I could understand, you know. <laughs> but they never name him after comics. No. Wait a minute, but there is. Are you ready for this? I believe the street that's the side street from where the late show was with David Letterman is called Senior Wences Way. Really? Yes. I mean, it has another name. It's like uh, 53rd Street or something like that. Oh, because like he that. did the, the, the Sullivan yes, show all the time. Yes, but it's Sen Senior Wences Way. Now, now uh, uh, folks, you're going, you're scratching your head, right? You're going, who the fuck is Senior Wences? Tell him who Senior Wences was. He was a ventriloquist who uh, did, he did this little thing. Little catchphrase was, it's all right, it's all right. It's all right, it's all right. And what he had was he did a hand puppet. It was a hand in puppet. In which he put lips on his, on his, on his thumb and his uh, next finger, whatever that finger is, the forefinger, I guess. And then he would put a wig on top of it, and then it would be a puppet. Mm -hmm. But the other one was he had a box, and he would open the box, and there was a head in the box. And he would go, it's okay, it's okay, it's all right, it's all right. <laughs> and then he would close the box. And he had done maybe, I don't know, 50 Ed Sullivan shows. Mm -hmm. And my father used to love Senor Wences. And I, I think my I, dad did too. Yeah, I didn't quite get it, but he, my dad was just howling at him. I got it. I, I, whenever I saw Senor Wences, to this day, when I go, go Google him, folks, Google or, or YouTube, Senor Wences. There's got to be Senor Wences. Well, no. you, you want an interesting fact. Yeah. And this is very ironic. I just was reading an almanac the other day and looking at famous celebrities that had died. And he, he you know how old he was when he died? Tell me a hundred and three. Hundred and three. I was going to say a hundred and three. <laughs> he was a hundred and three. Yeah. Wow. He he was a great ventriloquist. People love him. But anyway, there's a Senor Wences way here. Uh, well, he deserved it. Then. Usually, they have the name of the street like Fifty Third, and then under it, it says Senor Wences way, and it's like one block. But I, I, I thought that I always thought that was wonderful. At least you know they named one of these streets after somebody yeah. that I closely identified with, 
and was a big part of my youth because I still remember my father sitting there laughing his head off at Senor Wences. So what I thought I closed the box. <laughs> that was it. <a>, closed <laughs> the box. <laughs> People are probably sitting out there going, I don't know what the fuck they're laughing about. But just go <laughs> YouTube, <laughs> send your wences. YouTube, send your wences, I swear to you. In fact, if I can find it, I'll find a send your wences that I can play on the air, and, and people will know exactly what I mean. A great, great ventriloquist. There are no such things, by the way, as great ventriloquists, but he was. Mm-hmm. Um, because the rest of them are nuts. Uh, ex, uh, even, even Edgar Bergen was crazy. Uh, anyway, hey, we got to go. We've well, run out of time. It, time's this, flown by again. This, go, this goes by really, really fast when I talk with you. And that's why I love talking with you. Because it's a complete waste of time on both our parts. and it's, yeah, You're the only person I know that would have known Senior Wences. <laughs> that's why I love to talk to you. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles. Yeah, Brown. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. There we go. Okay. Hi. How are you? What's happening? Yeah, it's Alex. I love Bubbles. I just love Bubbles. I, I, I don't want to marry Bubbles, but I love Bubbles. Uh, I'm already married anyway, so I can't get married yet. Larry Bubbles Brown. Anyway, uh, I'm Alex Bennett, and uh, this is the, the 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 gamble. No, the ramble. <laughs> Believe me, it is a gamble. Uh, let me. Uh, I'm not. I can't do anything today. I am so fucked up today. My mind is like it's everything I do just doesn't seem to work. You know. I mean, and then I can't remember how to do something. It's like. One of those days, I think it, I had to take a, a, a Xanax and a half last night to go to sleep because I spend half my time after I get off the air, I, I, I make the big mistake. Oh, I think I'll involve myself in a little project. And then, of course, I find out that the little project doesn't work. And then I'm worried about it. And then I got to solve it. And then I go lie down and I'm still trying to solve it. And my brain is going a mile a minute and I can't get to sleep. So I take the Xanax. And then that doesn't work. So I take another little half of Xanax. And uh, before I know it, uh, the next day I can't remember things. So today I was supposed to do an interview with um, Stephen Pearl. And I wrote him last night. And I said, don't forget, we're going to do an interview at uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, what do you know? I uh, completely forgot the call. And I feel terrible about it. I called him up. I, I was so apologetic. It was like, you know, if I could have sent him money or something, I would have done it, you know, just because I felt so bad about uh, 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 about missing the call. And it, I think it was because it was really snowy outside. Girlfriend didn't go to work today because it was a snow day at her job. And... Um, so it was just, you know, me uh, and her. And so it kind of felt like it was Saturday. So I, it completely slipped my mind. And also I was involving myself in a whole bunch of other things, like the things I was trying to fix last night that I couldn't fix last night, I was trying to fix today. And, oh, God. Well, that's, that's it. I'm starting. I'm. St it's. It's. It's starting, uh, uh, Rob. I'm. I'm finally. I think losing it. What happened? I forgot to call Stephen Pearl today and do an interview with him. <laughs> what were you busy with? The weather? No, I, the, well, the weather had something to do with it. It was. You know. Here's. Here's the other thing. Uh, so I decided I would do it once again. I stuck a camera out my window. I just took a picture of a brick wall and snow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, between the two times, because I can only go for four hours on Facebook before they shut you off, so then you have to start over again. Mm -hmm. Whereas, by the way, on YouTube, I could do 30, I think 35 straight hours without being stopped. Okay. But anyway, so uh, I then started it up again. And between the two, I had over a thousand views. Wow! 
Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, th think about that for a second. I do this show every night, and I'm happy if I've got, uh, well, 25 people watching right now. Yeah. Watching a brick wall with just snow falling. What does that say? A about thousand viewers. What does that say about what viewers really want? It, it, well, I'm sure not all of them stuck around. It wasn't as though it was uh, programming that would involve you. Hello, Tom Yamaguchi. I'm glad you got yourself a new uh, computer because you look terrific. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so I so so I for, you know I, I I'm forget I forget to do things and you know. It was, I was having trouble with my, uh, we have two GabNet Roku channels. We have the regular GabNet Roku channel and then Ra GabNet TV channel in which I put all the videos on. Uh, although there are a lot of videos on the other one too. And um, uh, all of a sudden I went on the other day, I hadn't looked at it in like three or four months. It wasn't working at all. So, you know, uh, it, 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 there was like one of, the, one of the things was showing up. And it turned out that it wasn't uh, reading uh, files that were on my GoDaddy account. So I had to move them over to my other account. Something has happened between a couple of months ago and now. And the only thing is I added an SSL certificate. That's a security certificate. So when you go to the site, it says secure. And I think that may have done it. And so it's not reading it, even though the other hosting group it has an SSL certificate, but it's theirs. My certificate is for my website. So I don't know. Yeah, you don't really need one. The only really reason you need one is if people are putting in, you know, like credit card. Well, I don't know. I got a call from, uh, from GoDaddy and they said, well, you know, it, uh, Google after the first of the year is going to start not delisting you, but lower listing you. Uh, if you don't have SSL or whatever, so I, I or, or a notice will come up saying, uh, you know, this is a dangerous site. Or yeah, I've, no, I, I've I've had that happen when there hasn't been a certificate for place. Anyway, no sense. you're not an e-commerce. Well, I'm thinking of taking the, the the I can just take the security off by m removing a file that I had to add to it, right? And uh, I may try that and then see if it works. And if it works, that's what the problem is, is that the SSL certificate, which also doesn't allow you to hear the live programming the minute you go to the channel. Uh, we're, we've got James Lee is on the line. James is calling us from uh, Hawaii. Hello, James. Hello. Haven't heard from you in a while. It's so, what are you trying to do? Make us feel bad with all that fucking sun? No, great signal coming into the islands. Unfortunately, uh, Mr. Bennett, it's Merry Monarch time out here on the Big Island, so it's a lot of rain and a lot of humidity for the past three weeks. We've had a real wet month here. Oh, really? In February, March. Son of a uh, The roaches are really flying, <laughs> including our termites. Uh. <laughs> It's never really made me feel jealous with all of the vermin and all of the stuff that yeah. he deals with in the yeah. jungle there. Now, I think exactly. I'm naked and afraid. Now, up, of course, in our right hand corner, right up there, folks, uh, oh, I, 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 uh, there is Phil Meyer, ladies and gentlemen. He, uh, like a trooper, the only time he missed was last night, and then he did, uh, he phoned in. He, <laughs> he made sure he, you're, you're a trooper. I you're real yeah, I made sure I soiled the area. So how uh, are how are you? How's you're sitting down? First time since uh, Monday morning. Really? And is it comfortable? Uh, yeah. Uh, it's I, it's well, you know, nothing's comfortable. <laughs> you know, <that's, laughs> that I can guarantee you. Did they give you pain pills at least? Yeah, I stopped them though. Why? Uh, Why did you stop them? Well, they they told me that if you didn't really need them don't take them is yeah. it opioid type you know yeah. like norco or uh want to get addicted if you don't really need them what do they call that um uh vicodin mm. vicodin oh vicodin's baby stuff have okay. they removed the catheter no um i get okay. to enjoy that until uh the 29th now is that a problem you know i mean i was thinking like if i had to have my prostate removed they would do the same thing but having to walk around with the cath, what do you what do you do? Just walk around the house with this bag in your hand? Yeah, uh, although I don't do a lot of walking. Uh, they want me to walk. Uh, and uh, why don't you, you take know. a walk down the street holding the bag in your hand? Yeah, yeah, I'll get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> they'll figure I'm a bag man. But uh, no, nah, I'm just, uh, you know, just uh, I walk around in circles in the apartment mm -hmm. and then uh, I, I lay down a lot. And uh, one of the biggest problems I'm having is I don't watch too much TV in the bedroom. So um, the bedroom has a uh, Apple uh, uh, ITV or Apple TV. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. And I guess I hadn't signed up for like 99% of the things that I have. So I've been watching CNBC all day. Uh, well, not CNBC, uh, CBS, uh, uh, cable CBS. And it's the same four stories repeated 300 times. Yeah, but you do and, have a lot of other things you could watch. There's like CBS Sunday Morning's on there, 60 Minutes is on there. You yeah, know. well, uh, most of the other things that I went on uh, wanted me to go in and sign up online put in this code. Oh, yeah, we have to do that, yeah. Hey. Yeah, and I wasn't in the mood to put in the code. So, uh, you, uh, oh, I, really? I just laid there just and do watched it, it, uh, Hey, open just do it with your iPad. You can you can put in the code with your iPad. Yeah, yeah. I uh, but um, what the, uh, the the main news of the day was Zuckerberg. Well, we'll yeah. get we'll get to that in a little bit. Yeah. Okay, let's let's wait on that. Uh, right. story so we'll we'll talk about and, and i don't know if that's the biggest that's, story of the day you know i think, well, the, I think the biggest story of the day is the guy down in uh, austin uh oh. blew himself up well there's that guy but i've only been seeing four news stories over and over oh and over i see again. on the cbs <laughs> channel i see how you doing tom yamaguchi hello <laughs> you look a little tired tonight yeah, Wednesdays are my uh, my busiest days, so I um, uh, it's a little bit tiring. But I'm, I've got some energy. I, I just uh, wanted to call because I'm just really getting sick and tired of you trashing Martin Luther King. Me yeah. trashing Martin Luther King? Yeah, with, when you were talking to Bubbles. I just I, I, I uh, well let and, me. And I understand, you know, and I'm I'm saying, you know, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm yes, yes, Malcolm X. Definitely needs more, uh, more respect and attention he's getting. You know, yeah, yeah. I would. In one thing, uh, Berkeley, we celebrate his his uh, his birthday. Mm -hmm. You know what his birthday is? Uh, no, actually. Aha, May nineteenth. Okay. So you can celebrate. It's going to be on a Saturday this week. So you can celebrate Mar uh, Malcolm X's uh, birthday. You know what's going to be interesting is if I go down to Malcolm oh, X <laughs> Street here, if on that date there's anything happening down there, that will be interesting because I don't remember in past years anything going on down there. You didn't uh, know when to go. Well, I didn't know when to go. That was uh, true. Yeah. Let me just explain my feeling about Martin Luther King. No, I don't. I don't diss him. I just don't think his place in history is as it, it is as earned as say somebody like Malcolm X's would have been. That that's what I'm basically saying. Well, that I I agree when I when I when I was talking about Martin Luther King to Bubbles, I was quoting Malcolm X who said that he felt the trouble with Martin Luther King was how can you be helping black people if you're taking white people's money to do it? And I, I agree with that. That's what I have a problem with. There's no reason that's as bigoted as a statement as I could ever uh, come up with myself. What? Why is white people's money no good if they want to support a man and his story and his and his mission? Well, because he was basically backed by 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 white people. You know, I mean, it was a. a I just felt that Malcolm X was more my kind of radical, you know, and uh, I feel he comp uh, Martin Luther King compromised in a lot of situations. That's really my stance. I'm, I don't dislike Martin Luther King. He means a lot to a lot of people. So his message was important. Okay. Well, one more than he meant a lot of people. He had a lot of impact. Both of them had a lot of impact. And unfortunately, both of them would have had a greater legacy if, if they hadn't been assassinated at such an early age, right now, one thing that's ha that that uh, that uh, King could have been King's legacy if he had not been assassinated on April fourth of, of sixty eight, he was going to plan this poor people's campaign, mm -hmm. uh, uh, actual another march on Washington, but actually an occupation of Washington and poor people. Now, t tell me that's not a radical act. Oh, I and think I, I think I think it's a, a very radical act. Yeah. 
<laughs> and fortunately, uh, because they lost his leadership, the attempt to did it do, was a dismal failure. Yeah. This year, on the 50th anniversary, they're going back, uh, uh, Reverend William Barber, who is definitely inspired by King and, and leads the Moral Mondays mm-hmm. in, I believe, was it North Carolina, South Carolina, one of those Carolinas. Yeah. Uh, he's leading this 50th anniversary uh, to try to complete what Martin Luther King started. And I think that's something we need to watch as well. Well, let's see it. Let's see if it happens. You know, again, I as I said there, I was always bothered by the fact that we celebrate the birthday of Martin Luther King and all Malcolm X got was a lousy street, you know, Uh, and uh, that 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 kind of always bothered me because I think his place and he, he was a very important leader. From the standpoint that no, that from the standpoint that his story went went through a metamorphosis, which was a very important metamorphosis, from being this heavy radical, uh, wanting you know the move back to Africa movement, everything you know, and it it he metamorphosed into seeing where the whites and blacks could be could work together. Because he went to Mecca and he saw whites and blacks praying together and he said, aha, you know, it can be done. Right. Yeah. And I would just say that if you have not read uh, Malcolm X's autobiography, you really should. That was by uh, Uh, by, uh, uh, Haley, uh, Alex Haley. Yeah, Alex Haley. It was actually, yeah, ghost written by Alex Haley. But yeah, but it's called the autobiography of Malcolm X and shows the transformation he went through. I read it. I read it years ago. Years, years and years and years and years ago. Uh, yeah. and I read it several times. The first time I read it was when I moved in with my adoptive parents, Tad and Alice Yamaguchi. Mm-hmm. And Alice says, you're going to live with this. I'm going to give some books to read. <laughs> and <laughs> right on the top of that was the autobiography of Malcolm X. Oh, wow. And uh, and I was 19 years old at the time. And that set me on the path to radicalization, I can say. <laughs> Well, there was a time when he was completely vilified in this country by at least the white establishment and a lot of the blacks as well, because he was very, very radical. You know, he didn't. And what and when he did, uh, he did, by the way, make peace with Martin Luther King. In fact, there is a photograph of them having gotten together at some point. But it it, it still, you know, um, it still was a. A, uh, it was not a positive relationship because Martin, because Malcolm felt that Martin Luther King was too wedded to doing business with white people, and he felt that a black movement should be run and financed and handled by blacks. Yes, uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, James. Yeah, excuse me, uh, gentlemen. I'm going to have to go. I've got chores to do out here in the country. Well, uh, before you do and, that, uh, before you good do luck that, to you, Mr. Meyer, uh, on, on your catheter. You know, I, all, all of us out here, us old guys that have enlarged prostates here in Hawaii, Kaiser mandates that we know how to catheterize ourselves. So I've got the 18 inch tubes with the blue line on top, blah, blah, blah. And I've done that procedure quite a few times, including systems. Before you, you know, before, but, uh, before you leave, James, could you just turn that camera around and show us what what's your what apparently is maybe your backyard? It looks like it's just, it's, it's getting kind of jungly. I don't know if you see much. It's overcast. You live in a fucking and the jungle. It's just taking over like hell. Yeah, you live in a jungle. That's one yeah, hell of and, a lawn and, to know, mow. Since I had a detached retina uh, two months ago, I'm recovering on my left eye on the surgery i have to fly back to honolulu in a month to get the oil taken out of the inner of the eyeball oh wow Since, as you know with retina with retina detachments you can't fly above a thousand feet right uh because of pressure problems but since i wasn't going to stay in honolulu for three months right the uh, substitute is to put oil a silicon oil into the eyeball temporarily which allows us to fly uh, although the, the vision is blurred but then after healing it about four months you fly back to honolulu and they drain out the oil they suck it out and then put the Went back in an inert gas, which goes into a fluid. Well, this is uh, all pleasant. Uh, this is a very pl- pleasant image. Uh, that's, I guess the only thing worse is if he uh, Phil continues to describe his catheter. I think that that would be would lose us more audience. But thank you, James. I appreciate okay. it. Yeah, sorry. It's, it's a kind of a junky thing out here, but 
we'll see you all and uh, aloha and uh, hopefully you, you you folks got some dry weather although it is it is cold for us gentlemen it's 72 it, degrees it, oh, go, it, may i say from <laughs> all of us here in new york go fuck yourself okay <laughs> it, it's, uh, it's raining out here I mean, uh, uh, hui ho, hui ho, aloha. Uh, uh, and a uh, uh, to you too. Bye. Uh, that's James Lee, ladies and gentlemen. He calls the program from Hawaii, as, as does Renee. Maybe she'll call tonight. Um, uh, Jeff Stein has j joined us, and we've been joined by Ray Renati and uh, Bob Eberth, and Kevin has joined us, and uh, uh, and and the uh, uh, Phil Meyer who's sitting down. Um, so, um, and, 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 and let me just, uh, so anyway, did I kind of answer your question a little bit there, uh, Tom, you know, I didn't want to upset yeah. you. It's just, it's always yeah, been my position about Martin Luther King. He was never, he was never my favorite black, uh, <laughs> uh he was never my favorite, well, my favorite some, black leader. Yeah. Some say he was the senior Wences of civil rights. Uh, so. uh, who? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. By the way, I looked it up. Yes, Senior Wences Way is on. If you if you're looking at what was the Ed is the Ed Sullivan Theater here on Broadway. Mm -hmm. It is the street, no, the north, the street to the north on the north side of the uh, that uh, building, yeah. and that is Senior Wences Way. It is also yeah. known as something else corner. They named yeah. the corner. They they had had names to give away that day. So they have Broadway, and then they have Senor Wences Way, and then they have this whatever the name of the corner is. So uh, one more thing, Alex. Since you said you actually read the autobiography of Malcolm X, I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna try on my. I um, also read the autobiography of Senor Wences, by the way, in case you're uh, interested. Okay. But anyway, yeah. I'll, I'll try on my uh, my. Uh, I'll Malcolm X trivia question on you from the autobiography. Well, it was a long time ago. When he was washing dishes, and I think it was in Cincinnati, but he was working at a restaurant washing dishes, and there was another dishwasher there who he, uh, uh, he described as the funniest man he ever met in his life. Do you know who that person was? I'm only going to guess. Red Fox. Dick you Gregory. Are, huh? You are, Fox, really? Yeah. yeah. What? Good guess. Yeah. Yes. And but it's funny because what was what was Malcolm X's nickname in those days? Huh? Was it was something red. It was it was I think it was just red. Okay, basically, red. yeah. So uh, so when he says when somebody yelled red, I guess two people went what? You know? <laughs> um, um, anyway, um, so uh, you're fine, doing fine, Phil. Um, yeah, uh, you know, I guess you're not going out. You're not going to be doing much for the next nine days, right? No, no, <clears throat> and I, I don't, I don't feel like it. You know, I'm, I'm happy just laying in bed, uh, listening to the same four news stories over and over. <laughs> yeah, well, well, uh, 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 go, um, put, just take your iPad with you and just type in the thing and put in those numbers, and all of a sudden you'll have. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I know I could. I was just being very lazy. That is a very annoying part of having a Roku or an Apple TV or whatever, is that every now and then, for some odd reason, they say, oh, and put these numbers in and get it okayed. We want to make sure you have a subscription, blah, 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 blah. And you want to go, fuck you. You know, can I just do it once, you know? <laughs> but true. it's like every, I don't know, the last week, all of a sudden, all of them expired or something. I'd do my HBO again. I'd do my Showtime again. I, you know, every time yeah. they should have like one thing and that's it, you know? They, they, it's a conspiracy. They, they knew I wasn't going to feel good this week. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, you can spend your time filling out those things. Whenever, and whenever you get a new like Roku or a new uh, Apple TV, you then got to spend half the afternoon putting in all these apps with these permissions and so on. Well, and, I, I haven't bought a new one. I got one Roku and one Apple TV, and they do everything I want them to do, mm -hmm. uh, except now. <laughs> well, so, the new yeah. Apple TVs supposedly only need, you only need to put it in once, and they will it either... Rushes. Huh? It caches the credentials. I don't know if it uh, caches the credentials or, or whatever it does, but it, it's a spot it, where you put all the credentials in. Yeah, yeah. Under general or whatever it is. Yeah. Ah. 
Which reminds me to tell people that we do have a Roku channel for GabNet, and on that Roku channel, among other things, you can hear the audio here. Uh, I'm trying to figure out a way we can also have the live video from Facebook on the uh, from uh, YouTube on there. But if you've got a Roku, you've got YouTube, and if you go to YouTube, and uh, we are live on YouTube, so you can use your YouTube app on both your Apple TV and your Roku to watch the show. Okay. Uh, By the way, I have a. I, I, did I miss something? Because CNN has been running this Kennedy special every Sunday night, and then tonight I saw an ad for a, a trailer actually for uh, this te, this Chappaquiddick, this Ted Kennedy movie. That's yeah. Out now, yeah. is there s some anniversary? I know it's fifty years since Bobby was. You know, Martin and Bobby were killed in nineteen sixty eight. Is there another reason why? Uh, yeah, this is National Drowning Month. Wasn't it 50 years also since the uh, Vietnam Public War? Safety. <laughs> yes, it's 50 no. years since the end of the Vietnam War. Yeah. No. Yes, no. it is. The Vietnam War wasn't over in 1968, was it? 74. Well, that's not 50 uh, years. No, 50 I years saw... since something in the Vietnam War. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember. Oh, My Lai, that's it. My Lai, that's it, yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, but... Um, um, no, it. Um, I, I I haven't watched that Kennedy thing. I'll tell you what I did watch. The Hearst thing they did was incredibly good. Mm -hmm. You know, because I started, after all these years, you kind of forget all the particulars about it. And it was a pretty amazing story. And, and they make it come out like she was probably a willing accomplice at a certain point. You know? What's that on? Oh. Huh? That's CNN. It was on CNN. They already ran yeah. it, but if you if you have CNN go on your Roku or on whatever, or I think you even go to their website and watch it. It's probably on demand. Or something. It's probably on demand. Yep. Yeah. I can never just. I can never. What, wait, wait, what? 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 Ray? That's all right. What? I can never figure out how people make this argument that she was a willing participant. I mean, you lock somebody in a closet for a month. <laughs> I, you know, I, I just don't think you can blame them for anything they do after that. I mean, well, let me put it. Let me put it this way: they had a guy. They had two people. Uh, they had several people there. Some who were with the, uh, I guess, the FBI looking after for her, and uh, other people. Uh, and then there was this one guy who was the guy who kidnapped one of the guys who kidnapped her, who uh -huh. it, it basically said, "We kidnapped an heiress." And what we got after a couple of weeks was a, a literally a leader. I mean, she was literally leading the whole thing. He said she was not a, a, at a certain point. We said, look, we're going to let you go. Go home. I don't want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they just in the, you know, the Mel Sporting Goods thing where they, you know, they, they, uh, they uh, were leaving Mel Sporting Goods. They thought they'd stolen something. And then uh, 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 the guy in the store, uh, you know, stopped them. And they said, no, we didn't steal anything because they didn't actually. But she was in the car waiting. And when they started fighting, she pulled out a, literally an artillery-style weapon and started shooting rapid fire all over Mel's sporting goods. And then they got in the car, and she drove the getaway car. And they said, oh, he said, oh it, at any point during that, she could have just taken the car, driven to the closest police station, said, I'm Patty Hearst, please save me. But she <laughs> didn't. Hmm. Instead, Probably. she's picked up. Instead, she picked up the, the the machine gun or whatever and started firing like a madman, or woman. She hated this, her father, huh? She probably hated her father. She, she I think she, I, I think she hated her mother more than she hated her father. I think she loved she, her father, but according to this, she wasn't too happy with her mother because her mother was in cahoots with Reagan. I remember when they made the parents get a tractor trailer load of food. And they're throwing the bags off. Well, oh, that the back. was that was in this thing. Yeah, it was a complete fiasco because of the way they gave, gave it away, and it was just you know. Yeah, it was all over the. But I remember it from the time that it happened. It was uh, an interesting thing. 
And talking about Martin Luther King. Well, let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a quick story, the reason I like this documentary. For years, I've told the story, I think Tom knows the story, that when I was working at WPLJ in New York, and every night I was the radical on the radio, okay, I get a call one night from somebody saying, you want an interview with Patty Hearst? And I said, well, tell me about it. He said, if you, it, it, uh, for, a thousand, for a thousand bucks, we'll let you interview Patty Hearst. <laughs> and I said, well, where is she? So she's in, she's in the greater area near New York, okay? And we can get you the interview with her, but it's gonna cost a thousand bucks. And so I've always told the story how I could have done an interview with Patty Hearst while she was on the run, uh, but I've always wondered whether the call was legitimate or whatever mm -hmm. until I watched this documentary. Guess where she wound up? They wound up staying for about six months in Pennsylvania in a farmhouse. Oh, that's right. With that, um... Yeah. So the offer that was made to me was legitimate. The only reason I wouldn't do it is I'm not paying money for an interview. That, right. that would involve me, in, it make me complicit in her crimes or whatever. So that's the reason I decided to turn it down. But I always wondered if, if it was for real, if she was really here. And then here's this documentary and the guy who drove out with her and they stayed with her and everything mm -hmm. told the story about living in the farmhouse out in, uh, uh, out in uh, the backwoods of uh, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So... The offer made to me was for real. You know, wow. So, so that's I what was this, always, this, I was always interested in that whole thing because that happened right down the street from my father's gas station in San Mateo. He was about, uh, they were about uh, less than a mile away from there. Yeah. And we always had the FBI coming into, he had a Chevron station, so the government always issued the Chevron ga the gas cards. But we always had them guys coming in. We had Patty <laughs> in when she was at her dog. Mm -hmm. uh, my girlfriend at the time, we used to go by there, you know, in our cars and drive by and see what was going on. She got pulled over in a court because she looked like Patty Hearst. She had the, the hair and the whole bit and she got guns pulled on her and everything. And, uh, that was, that parents, was probably about three weeks into it. Her parents lived in Hillsborough, so it wasn't that far from, far from San Mateo. She didn't live in Hill. Yeah. She lived off of, I think it was El Cerrito, El Cerrito Road. Oh, in uh, Berkeley? Huh? Uh, oh, when she was in Berkeley or when she was uh, the parents? Hillsboro. Yeah, off oh, yeah. it was actually San Mateo Hills, Hillsboro uh, borderline. Yeah. yeah. They couldn't yeah. afford Big Hillsboro. mansion up there. Yeah. <laughs> couldn't afford it. Uh, it, yeah. it, it but it is. It, you that know. whole area was just full. Of, they'd put, uh, you know, portable phone booths and outhouses and everything up and down. The neighbors were pissed off. And, it, well, it, yep. what's fascinating is is the, the interviews with this guy who was the actual one of the actual guys who kidnapped her. And I thought that they all got killed. I thought the entire Sudanese no. Liberation Army got killed in that house no, in L.A. when they. LA. This was what was his name? I'm trying to remember his name now. Uh, he and his what? wife. What? Yeah. yeah. I uh, the name of the, of the of the guy whose house in Pennsylvania was Jack Scott. Jack Scott was the guy in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, but the, the, it was the it was oh what were their names I you know I remembered them the minute they said them on the show you know yeah uh, yeah uh, but a couple of them are still running around over here in Berkeley. Well, he uh, spent time in prison and he's out and he was telling them the story and he kept saying this woman was crazy. He said yeah. I he said I kind of wanted to unload her because to have her around was just you know, huh. The Harrises, right? The Harrises, yes. William Harrison. M M oh, M that's right. Yeah. M e. Emily, Emily Harris and uh, uh, Bill, Harris. Bill Harris. Bill Harris. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right. Well, Bill Harris yeah. is the guy who's being interviewed in this. Also, uh, Patty Hearst's boyfriend. What was his name? Stephen. Uh, Stephen Weed. Stephen Weed. Weed. He's still yeah, a dweeb. He, He's still a dweeb. She even hooked up with one of the FBI uh, cops. Well, no, she married him. She, she married yeah. a San Francisco detail yeah. protection cop. Yeah, because yeah. they came into the gas station. I saw them. And they were married till his dog. They were married till his death a few years ago. He he died yeah. a few years ago. Yeah. Um. She has never talked about this. 
You know, she's never, uh, she did an interview with Larry King, and I think that was about it. And she wouldn't talk about it during this this uh, thing. So it becomes kind of, it's not one-sided. They try to one. be as even-handed as possible. But, you know, with, with uh, Harris uh, saying how he feels about her, you know, he's more pissed at her than anything that she just kind of like threw them to the wolves rather than, you know, and just played like, oh, I didn't know what I was doing. And I mean, he says she knew what yeah. the fuck she was doing. Well, we told her to go home and she wouldn't go home. <laughs> that I was believe, I believe you know, because we realized that she was not an asset to have around because everybody was looking for her. Well, you know what? She probably realized she could get a free ride. You know, she probably realized that she was, she could have done what she wanted, probably pulled some shit and got away with it. Well, she, she got uh, a free ride anyway. She was found. And she, she was found guilty. But, oh, wait a minute! Here's the part that they bring up in this. Uh, if you are in a group of people who rob a bank and somebody gets killed, everybody who was involved in that is subject to the death penalty. Right. Okay. She was driving the car in Sacramento when they robbed that bank, and the woman was killed. She was driving. The getaway car. She wasn't in the bank. She managed to skate on that. Yep. Completely skate on it. Money, yep. money, money. Yeah. So she she got away with it. Yeah. Uh, so she comes off not appearing to be as wonderful as you would, you know, as, oh, the innocent, oh, she was kidnapped. You can use the argument only so far that because she was kidnapped, that's a good excuse. You know, the, uh, Stockholm Syndrome, any one of the things you want to throw at it. But after a while, you say to yourself, you know, she could have just driven that car away while those guys were in Mel's Sporting Goods, and yeah. she didn't, you know. Well, there's a certain... But is it, which isn't they, that what Stockholm Syndrome is, though? I mean, your thinking becomes completely convoluted. I'm just playing devil's advocate here. I mean, isn't that... That is what Stockholm Syndrome is. Yeah, but it, it, if you watch this thing, it is so consistent... I'm going to have to watch it. ...for yeah. several years... You know, at some point, don't you say, hey, I want to go home. Hey, I want to get out of this. Hey, I've got a way out of this. All I have to do is say, you know, they brainwashed me, and I'm home safe. Uh, but she believed. didn't do it. But we don't know her mental state before she got kidnapped. I mean, maybe she already had some sort of uh, mental illness of some kind or something. Yeah. I, I'm, just, I'm just saying, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I, these Harris people, I have a hard time believing everything they say. Yeah, you know. but uh, you know they—they they, they were. I mean, they can say anything. There were a lot of the cops who believed that she was, you know, she was a willing participant. But yeah. cops never believe in Stockholm syndrome, isn't that right, Phil? I mean, don't you kind of don't most cops put that down as a bunch of bullshit? I, I don't know. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, it's been going on for years. Uh, they've had other people with uh, Stockholm syndrome uh, issues, uh, but I don't know whether they accept that or not. I've never. Yeah. Uh, okay. well, uh, in anyway. case people, we, we should explain in case people don't know what Stockholm Syndrome is. Um, uh, Stockholm Syndrome is a um, it, it is when you're kidnapped by somebody, uh, you become you might start as a defense mechanism identifying with your kidnappers, uh, and uh, that's what she did, you know. I mean, I'm sure. I'm sure that had played par, par, part and parcel into it, but then they started treating her very nicely and you know, told her, "You can go home anytime you want to, kid. You know, we don't we don't need you around here." And no, I don't want to go. I want to stay. And she fell in love with several members of the. Uh, you know, she was having an affair with uh, one of the guys who got Will, Willie Wolf, who got killed in. Uh, in the house down in L.A. And uh, there was one other guy that she started taking up with um yeah. now she uh she's a dog uh, breeder <laughs> she is that's what she does what she kind breeds of dog? dog she does do she goes to dog shows yeah with her dogs yeah, yeah. wow well uh, that's amazing yeah you know, i just looked to see how many people are actually physically listening to us on the, the audio and it's like nobody's wa listening to us anymore they're all watching oh. us. So, you know. I was going to huh. say, when you were talking about... Maybe I should take it off the website. 
<laughs> so they don't, they don't say, how, oh, well, they, I, I don't yeah. have to do that. I can just watch the video. You know? Well, that's how, they, that's how they find it. They go to the website. Uh, the website is connected to YouTube, and, and they can watch it. Well, gabnet.net, if you go over there, whenever we're on, the picture is playing there. So, you know. so are you getting that from TuneIn, Alex, that, that data? I'm getting uh, that down. I get that data from our server. Oh, okay, no, and, it from, and it's amazing. Uh, I could I could turn off I could turn off the, the audio now to the to the server, and only about what nine people would care. Okay, uh, I think it Ray to, is getting that analytics from that place in the UK that supplied the got <laughs> Cambridge. Yeah, no Cambridge, Cambridge analytics Cambridge. is not in is is it in England? Cambridge yeah, analytics. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And uh, I guess they were hired. Uh, Ray sent me an article, and it was interesting uh, that they were hired by a British military contractor. And I was just wondering uh, who hired the British military contractor. I know. You know? That's so bizarre. And now Did you watch that, that video, uh, Bill? That, these, that other elections have profited from their information, and, they're, and, they're, uh, and the latest thing I heard, and it could be fake news, is that Obama profited from... Uh, the the uh, analytics that they provided. Yeah, uh, yeah. I haven't heard it repeated too many times, so it may be another false story. Well, that they the question to. isn't that they had an analytic database and that they were good at their analytics. That's not what people are yelling about. What they're yelling about is they went in and stole what? How many millions of, of Facebook 30, accounts? Three hundred million. Uh, huh? No, there was three hundred million of these games. You know, like the people that were sending you Candy Crush, it was I think those were ones yes. that were stealing our information. Well, wait minute, wait, Rob it, seems to know. It, it was a personality test That's that right. that kid. Uh, I saw the interview with him. Goes off or something. Yeah, and um, they did was, and this is one of the dangers of Facebook when people who, uh, when they when you sign in with. You know, uh, you, you get to a website and it says use Facebook. Well, when you do that, they now have all of your information from Facebook. They have it just turns on the faucet of all your information. And what happened in this case was if you took that test, not only did it take are you, are you granted the permission by taking that test. But what it did was it grabbed all of your friends and everybody yes. who were friends and it it pulled all their information in. So that's I, I never did that. My friends deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, um, 145,000 people who took that test, but it was like 50 million people whose information was garnered from it. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So that's what they're complaining about. Not the fact that's that, that, that this that is many. some, it's not like this is some data analysis company who you hire to analyze the electorate and they do well, it in a perfectly. Yeah legal and functional way but alex they placed ads that would cause people to uh, to be divisive yeah. uh and yes uh, but what do... we're saying is you're, you're you're claiming that obama used this company i have not heard any such thing I was i think you're i think I you're heard... mixing it up i think you're mixing it up with another story of something that obama used that um I don't uh, think so, but I'm on Norco, so you know I could be mixing it up with a lot of things. Yeah, I think it, I, I've never heard the fact that I don't think this company was even in existence back when 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 uh, uh, yeah you know but Obama what was running. Is it uh, Steve Bannon used to be on the on the executive? Uh, he was one of the executives of the company, and way back in 2014, he was testing phrases like drain the swamp and the wall and all these things before there was even a Donald Trump which which goes on to show you that Trump doesn't have an uh, doesn't have a an, a an initial idea of his own anywhere that he's just a vessel that they picked and it's just very sad Tom Yamaguchi well i think the word they used was puppet but yes, what was yes. really amazing was puppet. that um was they even they even came up with the with the name Crooked Hillary? Yeah, I mean, that's right. And I was like, I was listening uh, a, a joke by uh, Stephen Colbert was like, he says, 
if, the, if, the, if the, this guy had only one one skill, it was to give names to people and they're even pulling well, wait a minute. What wasn't yeah. well, also wasn't there that other guy, what's his name, who does the polling and so on? Um Harris? Ha no. Uh the guy who does blows like uh, focus groups and so on. Um oh, yeah. but yeah. you know that field oh, wait, 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 hold on a second. You throw him me off here. What? Gallup? No, no, it's not a name. It's a guy. Uh, um, starts with an R. Ras, Rasmussen. Ras no, no, that's Rasmussen. That's a phony poll. Um, God, I'm trying to remember his name now, right offhand. But anyway, he's the one that came up with a lot of those terms and and talking points for Republicans, and then he would send it to them, and all of a sudden you'd hear Republicans using oh, the Laffer. same term. What? Yeah. Is yeah. it Laffer? Art Laffer? Laffer, no, no, but you're... Red Fox. No, Red no. Fox. <laughs> Do you know what uh, struck me funny about this election? Uh, the field poll said that they refused to participate in it. And uh, now, and that has always been a poll that was widely respected ever since I was a kid. And uh, they, they, they refused to, uh, to participate in this, in this election. I think the, maybe because they felt it was the, the information was being tainted. That's a that's a possibility, yeah. Billy, but it seems as though yeah. the information, the tainted information, was being sent uh, to individuals, uh, and it was there to actually create a divisive atmosphere amongst people. Yes. Uh, uh, you hey, know, hey uh, Phil, this is Tim. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, you, you know who the the main architect of all this was was Bannon. Right. Probably he shot this. Yeah. He tried to shop this to Cruz at first. Yeah, he was trying to find somebody to go along with him, and, and Trump ended up being the perfect uh, lackey. Well, isn't it interesting that Trump fired Bannon? So maybe we're going to get to well, see. The well, future. you know, you know, uh, you know they're, they're talking about whether the data is still exists. Uh, they said they destroyed the fifty million pieces, of, you know, profiles. Yeah, and sure. They have what thousands of data points on each person, uh, but that stuff was shared with Breitbart. Hmm. So there's a good chance that you know when I worked with uh, the biggest data group, the Social Security Administration in Baltimore. Once data gets by an organization gets created, it never gets deleted. That's ever. Right. That's yeah. right. It's yeah. always That's somewhere right. uh, in a backup tape, on a backup server. Or somebody has taken it home and worked with it, and it's out there. Tom has his hand or up. Start on the cloud. Okay, Tom has his hand up, and then Rob. Were, then Rob. They were first Frank Lutz. Frank Lutz. That's exactly Lutz. what I was saying. But he was the guy who came up with all those those little terms that every Republican would suddenly, every one of them, be using the same term. You know? Right. Yeah. And he 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 came up with that. Yes, Rob. I I, I watched the uh, Zuckerberg um, interview tonight with that tech girl who had no business interviewing him because it was just softball questions. How come nobody asked the question, why should we trust Facebook anymore to, to have our data? Why should we trust you? Because all he talked about was, all he talked about, all he was asked about was what he was going to do with what happened in 2014. And they knew about this in 2015 and didn't say anything about it, right? And what are they going to do? Well, they're going to go back and they're going to audit all of these apps. And they're going to go and try to find where data moved and this and that and try to, to but what are you doing for me today? And how are you not going to be outsmarted again mm -hmm. today? And why should we trust you? Rob, we how, should how about making him? How about them. making him pay for it? Or, he should pay yeah, it. Why, the biggest fine in history. You know, the, at the the last question she asked, I changed the fucking channel. I was so aggravated. So tell me, now that you have children, oh, what God. Is this about? <laughs> you know, it was like really. I I was like. it was softball interview. Where was somebody who had balls to interview this guy? How, how about him paying for a do over of the twenty sixteen election? Well, that all the fake news. Well, you you dream well, on, dream happen. on, Tim. Uh, that's not going to happen. I know, but happen. you got to start with the. You no, know, but we should make him pay, uh, or Cambridge should pay. You know, they had a consent decree that it's twenty thousand or twenty five thousand per incident per day, uh, if they violated it, and that's fifty million minus the two hundred seventy five thousand. It's that's two trillion dollars in fines just under the consent decree. And now it's. And now we're stuck with a loose cannon in the White House that you wonder how we got there, right? All the polls, everybody was so wrong. 
And everybody was so surprised on election night. I mean, yet the people who knew the data, they just forged onward because they knew they were going to win. Yeah. Well, uh, he, uh, yes, Jeff. I, I have a little different uh, understanding about how Trump got where he was going. And I remember all the Republicans, and there was, what, 10 of them who were trying to, uh, to become president, and they were all uh, on TV at the same time. Mm -hmm. and, and everybody tried to be Mr. Nice Guy to everybody else, except for Trump. And he just ripped off anyone, he, anyone who got up uh, at the day. He, he would uh, rip off on uh, Bush or whoever it was. And I think he was amplified by that, where, where he, was, he got great reactions to that by yep. TV. People said, oh, you can't believe what he said to so-and-so last night. And, and you know what? Nobody else uh, competed with him on that stuff. That's one thing. But the other thing is there was too many of them. Well, how, how, do you, how else do you stand out from uh, low-energy Bush or uh, tiny Marco or, uh, you know? Uh, they, they just posted the transcript of, of the Putin phone call. Yeah. Putin says, isn't it true you tried to sell Russia's secret war code and plans? And Trump replies, sure, I have sold a coat and a two pair of pants. That's a summer joke, hey, eh, boss? Hey, yeah, it's the first joke I ever heard out of you. That was pretty good. I'll take it if Man. I can. Yeah. I love the Marx Brothers. They were brilliant, even though they didn't write their own. Hey, well, Keith here, didn't like them because they didn't write their own jokes. Here is the, here is the latest uh, thing that people are, are questioning. Mm -hmm. uh, as long as you brought up the Trump phone call to Putin. Uh, you know, uh, he has managed to use his tweets to insult uh, just about every world leader, from Angela Merkel to Theresa May uh, to the French, uh, uh, the French president, uh, on and on and on and on and on. The only one he hasn't written about is guess who? Yeah. Putin. 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 And, well, and, and wait a minute, wait, hold, 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 let, let me finish Stormy. Tim. Let me, let me finish Tim. Uh, they, the discussion has moved to a newer discussion of what does Putin have on this guy? Mm -hmm. Has he been compromised at some point where he is doing Putin's bidding and is not insulting Putin and is not saying anything against Putin. He doesn't seem to worry about insulting our, our allies, such as England or Germany or France or a lot of other countries. Australia. Australia, yeah, but he won't ever say anything negative against Putin. And the question is, and they're starting to ask it, even Republicans are asking it, what does Putin have on Trump? Yes, Pat. Big, uh, yes, big. Phil. Yes, well, Phil. Uh, well, I, I think that for the first time, uh, you see, what most American leaders have done is they've inserted their, uh, their uh, direction on other countries. The, the Mideast is always saying, well, America is trying to make us live like them and, uh, and so yeah, forth. That's right. So He's leader of the free time, world, Phil. Uh, yeah, well, all he did was congratulate the guy, and he, didn't, and he didn't enter into trying to convince Putin to come around to our way of living. You know, I mean, it, it, it's just what the Democrats have been screaming for. He didn't uh, confront him at all on the on the on the, uh, the, the time and the place. Come on. Not the time and the place. In large words, do not congratulate. Well, you know, the well, only you, way. Hey, Rob, you know what, you know what he somebody. thought that meant? They figured out what they thought. He thought that meant, don't congratulate Putin for sabotaging our election. Oh, That's what yeah. he thought that meant. Well, right? Uh, when he didn't know, do that. <laughs> I'm not so sure it was Putin. You don't feel at all used, Phil? Not at all? You think, when you think that those terms. I think, I think if anybody should feel used, 
I think if anybody should feel used, it's all of you guys that have been used by Facebook, been used by this uh, uh, analytics, uh, has been used by Hillary Clinton. Absolutely, we do feel used. Hey, hey, do you know there's a link between this fear that Trump, uh, Trump has and the Novichok nerve agent they used in Britain? Is everybody thinks, why did, why did Putin do something that's just unbelievable he would do that? And it, they think, well, it's a message to all the ex-Russian spies. But it's not. It's not a message to the people that were ex-Russian spies. It's, it's, it's a message to all the guys in the United States, like Manafort, Flynn, uh, Lewandowski, uh, Corey Page, whoever his name is, all these people, including Trump. Okay. You divulge anything, then you're you're a dead man. Okay, Bob Eberth, yes. Have you no have you noticed that the only people Trump ever compliments are people like Erdogan, right. the guy in Egypt, the guy in the Philippines? Right. He loves dictators. Right. Yeah. So he saw nothing wrong with the elections in Russia. No. In fact, he would love to have had an election like that here. He made a comment about it. He said he congratulated the Chinese uh, the Chinese leader because he 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 became a lifelong leader. He goes, maybe we should try that here in the U.S. Yeah. What kind of quest? What kind of? What about the salmon? What about the salmon guy who in, who imprisoned all his relatives in Saudi Arabia? Well, and the th that same guy that Kushner had two slumber parties with when he was over there. Well, the the, the uh, did you did you happen to watch uh, the Saudi Arabian prince on uh, sixty Minutes this week? Yeah, I watched part of it. Yeah. Well, you should have watched all of it, Tim. Oh yeah. You know, uh, it was very interesting. I mean, I find him a fascinating guy. I mean, the reason he, uh, he, he to begin with, yes, he imprisoned all those uh, those uh, guys with a lot of money, uh, but he imprisoned them in what the Hilton Hotel, I think it was, or the uh, yeah, it was the uh, yeah, it was one of the big big well, hotels. Yeah, in, in luxury in luxury suites with. Uh, you know the, the the complete run of the hotel. Uh, that was he got uh, results, and he got results. Well, somebody, there, there's a source that says that Kushner provided him with a list from our intelligence agencies of people he should should imprison. That's that's a source. Now it's only one source I've heard from one of the news organizations. Well, so far but, there's no there's no sign of him having imprisoned any Americans. The only pre people he imprisoned. No, 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 no. They told you what Saudi Arabians to imprison. To imprison, not Americans. Yeah, but in, in they any event, the intelligence because well, Saudi Arabia well, never the, 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 This wasn't brought up in the interview. They brought up the, about all the people who had been arrested. I think there were thirty of them. And they're still under house arrest, uh, right? And, and because but uh, he felt they had stolen from the people and that they had, uh, you know, done wrong, and that's the reason he imprisoned them. You know, and I'm not um, saying I'm not defending it. I don't know the full facts of the case, but he certainly had his his reasons for believing he had the right to do it. And it, but he's also at the same time for distraction, using doing the opposite of what Trump does. Trump's taken away our freedoms, including these NDAs for federal employees. That's another one. Yeah, but that ben, is, ben Salman is giving is giving more freedom to the women as a distraction of what he's doing behind the scenes, amassing his power. He's just like Aragon. He's amassing his power, I'm afraid. Well, uh, all, all I'm saying is, is I think that uh, I, I, I think that there is something that Putin has on Trump. I think Trump is the Manchurian candidate. He is basically the guy who got into office because Putin knew he was malleable and could be used. Yes, Tom. And one of the people asking that question is uh, John Brennan former CIA director. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I saw him on CNN tonight yeah. talking about that. Yeah, and I, I think maybe he was the one I heard on uh, MSNBC today as well. And he can only tell us 10% of what he knows because of all the, it's all top secret. Right. But, you know, maybe there, uh, there are videos of him being peed on by Russian hookers for all we well, know. Well, he was, he went to that uh, nightclub in Vegas that had that as a, as one of their um, yeah. musical numbers. Yeah. Now, I mean, we get to we get to we get to the uh, stormy. Day. Oh yes, Ray. Yeah, I was just listening to an episode of Fresh Air, Terry mm -hmm. Gross's program on yeah. NPR, yeah. and there are a couple of guys who wrote a new book about this. And there's all kinds of evidence about Trump uh, dealing with the Russians and uh, trying to build a tower David in there. Corn? David Corn? Yeah, he was trying. Yeah, the evidence. 
the evidence is all there. It's in emails. It's in it's it's it, there's paper trails. It's, it's all there. People, someone they just put it all together in a book. Well, uh, and no one's paying any. Well, you know how you can yeah, how how you roulette. how you can phone up and congratulate a man who won a completely rigged election. I mean, it is just it. it to begin with, he either had his opponents disqualified or killed. That's another mm -hmm. one, uh, or arrested, uh, and so he had no opposition. And then there were video videos today of the Russian polling places and the voting boxes being stuffed. Yes, I saw. Okay, that. now how do you <laughs> then, like, knowing in, armed with all this information, as president of the United States, call him up to? Uh, congratulate him. By the way, what you heard was, Phil, that Obama called him up to uh, Putin six years ago to uh, congratulate him for winning. But at that point, we didn't yeah. have the information about the poisoning, about the way the elections have been rigged. I mean, all this information was not available at that time, but it is now, and we've got a president congratulating him. Yes, Rob? He also didn't congratulate him. He, what he said was, congratulations on getting through another election cycle. He right, did not, that's exactly. I was going to say the same thing, okay. Rob. Not congratulations. take it out of my mind sometimes. That's crazy. <laughs> well, no, it, it could well be that that, that is the case. Uh, uh, some people are spinning it to say that he congratulated him, but even if he did, at that point in time, we did not have the information at hand. But then, but, they hit, then he hit him on all the points that we had problems with, too. Right, he Immediately absolutely. talked about the problem. Yes, sir, Phil. Uh, no, Obama's no perfect, but okay. he was. A uh, I've I've got a cut. I can't sit any longer. I'm going to have to go lay down. Okay, go lay down. We're good. so happy you, know. you became. You were part of our citizens panel party tomorrow night. You'll be able to make it all the way through. Uh, maybe. Good night. A, a good night, Take uh, Phil. Care. Okay. Sorry, Phil. Uh, Phil. Uh, yeah. Now we can talk real dirt about Trump. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Phil. Uh, okay. All right. Okay. Uh, and Mueller to... asked his questions today. He's he Mueller came out today to talk about uh, what he wants to talk to the president mm -hmm. about, and they're going to try to negotiate that. Lots of people are saying there's no way this meeting's ever going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. That, I don't understand. Yeah, well, Trump's, too, Trump's too busy worried about who leaked. He's well, worried I, about the leaker. I don't understand how if. The special prosecutor wants to talk to him, or they don't call him special prosecutor, whatever it is, uh, independent prosecutor, um, how he could refuse it. Doesn't he have to? Isn't that obstruction of justice if he doesn't? It'll, 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 he could take the fifth. He can take the fifth. Mm -hmm. Did anybody see the guy that's connected to Roger? No, Stone? but if he, if he takes the fifth, he has to take the fifth consistently throughout the entire interrogation. He can't just take the fifth on one question and then not take it on another. You know, answer he can, He's question. old enough to say, I can't recall. <laughs> sessions is giving him prep, preparation sessions. I can't recall. There's 2,000 ways to say I can't recall. <laughs> yeah. I disagree with you. Well, how, what, how do you disagree with me? Well, I, I think that uh, somebody can, can uh, say I refuse to, to respond on this question and 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 accept the next one, uh, I, one. I, 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 I i know that in a court of law okay if you're testifying and you take the fifth you have to consistently take the fifth you cannot take the fifth on one question but then decide am i you seem to agree with me ray do you on this yeah yeah i do but i'm not i'm not sure if if they have to abide by those rules in the, under this circumstance, because it actually but isn't a court, a court. But, but the problem is, you know if he I mean? takes the fifth, it'll kill him politically. He will start losing yeah. much more support from the Republicans. So this is a political decision, not a, a, a legal decision. Because we already know Kushner's going down. Well, well, it's just a matter of whether we get Trump. Well, the, the thing is, yeah. he no. The thing is, he has been and and constantly has been. Um, uh, uh, you know, uh, now I forgot what I was going to say. Oh well, 
That's not well. He'll just do. I don't recall all the time. Uh, you remember John Dean? Well, that's what I was going to say. I don't recall. I don't recall. If he does that, though, he's going to seem suspicious. And what he's doing lately is he is losing his Republicans. I mean, yes. Uh, you've got uh, what do you call the uh, the uh, head of the house, uh, 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 O'Donnell. What's his name? No, no, Con- okay. McCon- Ryan. Oh, Ryan. Ryan. McCon- Ryan has has come out kind of against Trump in the last couple of days. So does yeah. so is McConnell. Yeah, I mean, I think they're all sick of him, and they don't want to they they don't want any part of this charade that's going on. You know, this is just getting to be ridiculous. Um, hey, 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 Alex, do you know Randy? Credeco, the radio show. No, never heard of him. WBI. They interviewed him. He's the guy. He's the go-between between Roger Stone and Assange. Never heard of him. It's like the guy was doing. Uh, Ari Melber interviewed him. If you go back and watch it. From Boy, the radio uh, show. can I say something about Ari Melber? I, I, because I see him on right. MSNBC. No, go ahead. Singularly, the most boring host on MSNBC. Just know, this is a terrible. Crocetto started doing impressions of Nixon and Reagan instead of answering the questions. It was unbelievable. The guy's a half comedian, and he's half of a Roger Stone and half of a radio announcer. Yeah. Uh, but it was him and Hall around answering any question. Any, he, he would just jump around. Anybody watch Ari, Ari Melber at all? What do you think? He's kind of boring, isn't he? He's just yeah, he is. I don't watch him. Yeah, I mean, yes. I, I I just don't understand it because they they certainly a lot better people out there could be running that sh- shop, but he's a lawyer. It's always important to have a yeah. lawyer, just, as though we don't have enough lawyers as there well, is he, already. Hey, Alex, he likes hip hop too, and he does a lot of hip hop references. No, oh, very good. You got to give him. Well, I'm not crazy boring about hip hop, so yeah, <laughs> doesn't matter. Um, the Stormy Daniels thing seems like the uh, story that just won't go away. You know, by now you would have thought everybody was tired of the Stormy Daniels story, but apparently it's uh, it's just it just keeps on going. And now you've got the uh, playmate, who mm-hmm. it turns out was lied to was lied to by the National Enquirer when she signed a non disclosure agreement. The reason she signed a non-disclosure agreement was because she had given them an article. And so they said, we want a non-disclosure agreement because we want the exclusive on this. Mm -hmm. And so what they had her sign was a non-disclosure agreement rather than just something like you promise not to publish this anywhere else. And so that's the uh, so-called non-disclosure agreement. And she's claiming it's a complete charade and that she wants to be free to that. And um, I think she's suing the National Enquirer and she's suing the President of the United States. And in a court of law, uh, the court said, yes, you can sue the President of the United States. (laughs) Yes, uh, Bob Ebert. If my memory serves me correct, uh, the lawyer that was uh, representing her was also representing Trump. So he was not working in her best interest. And I think that's what they're uh, putting the balance of her case. Part of it, yep. yeah. Case. Now, supposedly, no there, there is the inference where the Stormy Daniels case is concerned that there are tapes. There are photos, I think. There are photos? Mm. Photos, yeah. I don't know. I heard video. I heard photos. But she's got a text. She's, she's got a dress, too. Oh really? She's gonna have a she's gonna have a test that she's got a dress with DNA on it. Ooh. Oh. She kept it and kept it pristine. She's gonna have a test that, now now she wasn't raped, but she had her freedom taken away by that NDA. And it's a totally if you know anything about contracts, that was a totally hundred percent one sided contract. Those usually can be tore apart in a court of law. Oh, by the way, you know what's very interesting that we should be getting uh, the results of soon? Uh, do you know who did away with all their NDAs that they had with their employees? The Weinstein Corporation. <laughs> they said they are now free to speak whatever they want to say. And file bankruptcy. Oh, because he's yeah. gone, so yeah. they want to make There's things right. A lot of stuff. I think they said they can say whatever they want to say about Harvey. Maybe not about the company, but about Harvey. 
you know what's fascinating about Trump is the way he treats these women is really what the Me Too complaint, uh, campaign complains about. But tr- Trump is treating these women as if he's a pimp. Just like a pimp would treat his employees, you get out of line, little missy, and you'll have hell to pay. That's how he's treating these women like he was a he thinks he's a pimp. Well, you know, that's his, that's what describes his actions. Look, and it's the American uh, people made a big mistake. That's oh all my. we can say. And I don't know what we can do about it. Yes, Tom. No, the American people did make a big mistake, considering there were three million more of us that voted for Hillary Clinton. We didn't make the mistake. It was 70, 77,000 people in a handful of states in the Midwest that made the decision that we're all stuck with. That's easy to say, Tom, except for the fact that three million people uh, more voted for her when it should have been a great deal more than that, considering the talent that was running for the presidency. You know, well, I tried. I, I, wrote, I worked in the campaign. I tr- I called people. I pleaded with people. I said, you know, our biggest enemy is is not Trump. It's complacency. And 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 well, because well, he, also, yeah, the, but he, it also goes back was, to the old thing. Complacency, but it was actually yeah. the the discouragement once again we get back to this this cambridge analytica much of their focus was discouraging people from vote their much oh, of their success was suppressing was suppressing the vote i know i was affected by some of it believe it, just tired of seeing those bad stories about hillary yeah. uh, yes uh, ray uh, ray uh, a lot of what they did was uh, target bernie supporters to uh, become apathetic and, and not right. vote for Hillary. Uh, and millions of people. They targeted and millions of people. And it, and it was voting, successful. Not voting in elections is an addiction. And like any addiction, American public has to hit rock bottom before they'll do anything. They gotta well, hit rock you know, bottom. I, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta say this, uh, you know, where the presidential election is concerned. Again, we're dealing with the Electoral College. And in the case of Tom, who went out and did his due diligence and voted. How many electoral uh, votes does California have? It's one for every senator and one for every congressman, right? 53? Maybe 53? Okay. Oh, how, how do you feel that your, your, your vote, your one vote, is just compressed down into 53 votes? <laughs> you know? Uh, well, it, it does, really, does I mean, it, it, whereas in other elections, like congressional elections, one vote mm-hmm. can be the determining factor. But in the case of the Electoral College, you're not really voting for president. I, you could not have gone in to vote and it would have still turned out the same way. Okay? Yes. And I think that it's time we really revisited this whole Electoral College and what it represents. It made a lot of sense when you had a guy in Iowa who had to get on horseback and go to Washington, D.C. to vote in the Electoral College. It made yeah. sense then. But now it doesn't make sense. It's not a travel issue, you know? Absolutely. Yes, Tom. Even, even then, it wasn't as much a travel issue. as It was a concession to states that had lower, that were have more rural populations. Particularly, states, in south, particularly in the South. And so, in a way, it sort of uh, uh, got into the slavery issue because the South was afraid that if the, the urban uh, centers had too much power, they would, out, they would outlaw slavery. So, and, the, so, and, the, and the Republicans took advantage and used their Southern strategy, and that's all it was. Mm-hmm. Racist, racist strategy, you might as well call it. Sure. Well, yeah. Uh, you know, but it does make sense that, well, hey, you know, at least you have two votes. You know, yeah, if you have one congressional district, you got three votes, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Can't you have, uh, like, Rhode Island or something like that where you only have one vote? What? no, you don't have, you, electoral college, you have at least, at least three. three because you're going to have two senators and you're going to have at least one congressional district. Okay, but only yeah. one. What were you yeah. saying, Tom? Yeah, I was saying one one for each senator, one for each congressman. So a state like uh, like Montana, where you only have 
one congressman, so they have three, but they have at least three. Mm. And so that puts them at an advantage of a state that has a lot more uh, population. It here, sort of, yeah. right, it sort of makes the, the individual voters in the state have collectively more power than the millions of people who are in New York and, and California and Illinois and such and such. Here's where I'm very stupid, okay? And that is um, how do we determine how many congressional districts there are in a state? Let's say... I mean, is it doled out by population? It's by population. Is it, because I wondered if, if a state, a, if, a state if, if a state, if it's under a million, it's a, if a state every, like every seven hundred eighty thousand or so. But if a state like Connecticut couldn't say, well, we have forty-two congressional districts because we've chopped the state up into forty-two congressional districts. No. Does it have to be chopped up into proportionate population? In other words, how do you establish a congressional district? We talk about gerrymandering. They get this thing's getting really wild. Where you know, this side of the street is one congressional district. This side of the street isn't. And on the other side of that street, it's the old congressional district because it somehow snaked through. I mean, what? How? How do we decide how many congressional districts there are? And then that would determine how many electoral votes a state has. I think yeah. it's by population. It yeah, is by population. population, and that's the reason they take the census, is to how find out how many. Uh, people okay, so what I want to know is how many people per congressional district is there? All right now, I don't know. See, I don't think any of us know here. I. Uh, well, I mean, you know, seven hundred eighty thousand, I think. What? Around seven hundred eighty thousand. Really? Yeah. You think? <laughs> well, I'm California. But California has what? Football all I'm saying is, residents. all I'm saying is, I would feel my vo much better about my vote counting if they added up all the votes that people had, and if Hillary won, she became president of the United States, and if Trump won, he became president of the United States, and none of this bullshit about uh, 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 electoral college, because that way you can game the system, you know. Okay. You, you, 711,000 people. Is that what it is? Yep. Yeah, uh, I just looked at uh, it. Okay. I'd say 710,760. Now, let me ask you this question. Let's say in a state like Connecticut, right? Yeah. Uh, how many people live in Connecticut? I don't know. Oh, well. Uh, uh, all I'm saying is if it's 711,000, let's say you're in a state and you've got 712,000. Where does that other guy go? <laughs> Puerto Rico. I think you I think you round up or round down. Yeah. Yeah, it's approximately 711,000. So you do you they round it. Connecticut, yeah. I think we have six uh, congressmen. Mhm. Mm and yeah. two senators, so eight. That would be yeah. eight votes. So does it require a constitutional amendment to get rid of the electoral college? Yes. So yes. that would be a, at least yes. a two-year process, right? Yeah. Even if they, if they decide you to get started. You know what started. the problem with that is? Never have. The, the Republicans have a bunch of amendments they want to pass, and they only have four or five states to go, is my understanding. Yeah. And they'll yeah. pass some really bad uh, amendments along with that one. Because uh, once you have a convention, you can, uh, you can, anybody can uh, bring up any amendment. Tom? It has to be approved by the state legislature. Tom? And the Koch brothers are busy, busy writing all those amendments. Yeah. yeah. Tom? Yeah, who's writing them is Alec. Yeah. Okay. Alec is okay. writing them. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah. Let Tom talk, please. Yeah, I would say there is an alternative to uh, a constitutional amendment, and that's when each state agrees that it will give all its electoral votes, and California turns out as 55, uh, all its electoral votes to the winner of the uh, national popular vote. And a number of states, including California, has done that already. And so that means if you get enough states that make that, was it 271 or whatever, uh, you know, threshold, that would basically uh, make the Electoral College. So what you're saying is if, if, if all states agreed to say, we will cast all our electoral votes for the person who wins the national vote. Right, exactly. Then that's one way to just do away with it without having pass a, another amendment to get rid of it. Yeah. Hmm. Every state has to agree, right? And that's never. Well, not every just, state. Just most of, just enough to to uh, 
to uh, get that 270 or 271 uh, electoral college votes because then then whoever wins the majority of the So of, in this case, vote. in this case, Hillary would have won because right. yes. every all those states that agreed to that. So California has that already, right? Yeah, we've already passed that. I think New York has too. Yeah. So I'm not you, sure. I want to check on that. So you guys so, you guys okay. went for Hillary, obviously, because she won the national vote. Right. Well, it, it is all, it only can only go in effect when enough states actually. Let do me it. let me also ask this. You know, I mean, I'm asking questions because I don't have the personal knowledge of it. But how how much have uh, ha, there have been losses uh, where people did not win the electoral college, but they won the national vote? Is this the biggest separation ever? Three th three million, or it was was? Yeah, I think it is. I mean, really? you know, the la the last time it happened was when, of course. Um, Gore and Bush, and that was yeah. where it was just a better, you know, what less than a million votes, maybe seven hundred thousand, something like that. Yeah. So yeah. this is pre this course, is pretty this is pretty profound if you think about it. Oh yeah. That the American people didn't get who they voted for. Yeah. <laughs> no yeah. kidding. And we have this. <laughs> they, they also kept they also kept the people from voting using false list of uh, felons and also the cross. State checks, cross cross check against mm -hmm. states for similar names, and got and kicked a lot of people uh, that were Democrats. Okay, but now let's let's go back and let's look at an election that happened a long time ago, the election of John F. Kennedy. That one was supposedly rigged. That mm -hmm. one supposedly was won because of the vote in Chicago, which yeah. was supposedly rigged by John by by Mayor uh, uh, Daley. Um, Just like Putin rigged his. Yeah. Kennedy still still had the national popular vote. He still won the national popular vote. It was close, but he still he no, still no. Had but if the, he the didn't majority. if he didn't take Chicago, they say he would have lost that race. It was that close. Well, yeah, he would have lost Illinois, and uh, and yeah, and, and then you'd have sort of a Trump like situation, or yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, you know, saying dead people voted in that election. Yeah, well, they they say a lot of dead people right. voted in that election, uh, many times. But because Daley fixed it, um, you know, and that was if he had not won Chicago, it probably would have gone to Nixon. It was that close. It was that was a very close race. I think it was several hundred thousand nationally, yeah. if uh, I'm not mistaken. Isn't it sad that we didn't know that till years later? Yeah. Well, but but how do you feel about that? I mean. You know, I mean, well, is this is this payback? Is 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 Trump payback for Kennedy? Possibly. Uh, wasn't I've, his... I've been watching the Kennedy documentary, and it I don't like us. I don't like him so much anymore. I know. I was thinking the same thing. I've been watching it. Yeah. Wasn't there an implication that Joe Kennedy was involved in that too? That he that yep. somehow he used his organized crime connections. He, he, he had the same attitude that Trump has. Yeah. Joe did. Yep. And Joe Jr. too, I believe, also. So I, uh, Bobby and Johnny might have slowly moved away and been the new generation, but who knows? Uh, you know what the other? You know, the I, ne I, ne I never, I never, I never, I never, I never trusted Bobby Kennedy. Not, not after no. uh, he worked for McCarthy. No, no. Uh, you know, and Teddy had his problems for a long time too. Well, Teddy <laughs> had his problems. Chappaquiddick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that movie's yeah. out now. <laughs> Yeah. You, you, you know one thing that the Mueller probe is showing us as normal Americans? How much, it's basically showing you how much white collar crime never gets investigated and nobody ever pays for anything except Martha Stewart. There is so much white collar crime going on in the corporate world. Mueller's, they could, they could hire thousands of people. It's just, it's a way of doing business. And, in our capitalist society, it's sad. You know, you have to go back to Rutherford B. Hayes, who uh, lost the popular vote in 1876 by 250,000 votes to uh, to Samuel Tilden, but won the Electoral College. Right. 1876. Well, yeah, is the name. Uh, uh, yeah, and I think that's the only. Uh, is that all the only other time the Electoral College is not? No, there. Been no, there yeah. were a couple other times, but uh, you know, Bush was really close. Um, yeah, well, Bush, uh, five hundred 
forty thousand actually. Okay. Right. But the population was bigger. And then John Quincy Adams and then Trump. That's it. Yeah, Forbin uh, and Benjamin Harris. Forbin writes something we've all known. Uh, the JFK and Sam G. and Connor were both banging the same woman, uh, Judith yeah. Exner Campbell. That's right. uh, how, how many people think of the leaker at the White House as Pence or Pence's wife? <laughs> it's probably their. It's probably their bunny, Marlon yeah. Bundo. <laughs> By the yeah. way, by the way, uh, Marlon Bundo, number one book in on Amazon, and the Pence Still? book on Marlon B Bundo is, I think, number four, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody yeah, can yes, look sir. it up. Pence's right. daughter actually likes both books, and they sent out a post of how their bunny looked good with the little bow tie. Yeah. Yeah. So she said she thought it was cool that both books are out and that both yeah. books are going to The carry. difference between one book and the other, however, is that Marlon Bundo in the John Oliver version uh, is a gay bunny. <laughs> and he falls in love with another gay bunny. And uh, they are chided for being in love with each other, but they can't figure out why because love is just love. And uh, I have the book if you want me to read it to you some night. I also sent away, I also got the uh, Audible Books version, which has John Lithgow and uh, what's his name, plays Sheldon on, uh, on the Big Bang Theory. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Parsons. Hmm? Parsons. Yeah, Jim Parsons. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it has a whole bunch of uh, very well-known people doing the voices on the, on the narration, so. Uh, but it's it's available on Amazon. It's only eleven bucks. I don't know how much the other one is. The audio book's only a dollar thirty nine. Yeah, yeah. So you can add on the audio book, and uh, it's all all going to gay causes. Um, I can't remember the name of the foundation that supports gay rights and gay advocacy and gay help and so the on. Trevor, I the think Trevor, the Trevor, Trevor Foundation. Trevor? That's okay. it. Yeah. That's cool. uh, and so I mean. Uh, you're giving to a good cause while at the same time telling Pence, fuck you, your book doesn't sell. <laughs> but yeah. it's funny that Pence's daughter is supporting both books. Yeah. And saying they're both going to good causes. Yeah, well, how old is his daughter? I think she's like, uh, she looks like in the pictures, she's at least in her late teens, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder how her father feels about that. <laughs> you know, because uh, it, I have but to hand the Cheney's it. went through that, right? I have to hand it to Oliver. You don't know what what it takes to get a book put out. He must have known about the Pence book months ago, so yeah. they would have enough time to put together this book in order to sell it. Okay, but to see it too to get an idea of and how the artwork the, was and everything. And by the way, the Oliver version uh, has gone into its second printing already so <laughs> there's no more books available uh, as of today i'm sure you can get a kindle version of it no i guess you can't get a kindle version because mine doesn't work on my kindle it, it says only, here there's a kindle version on amazon i, yeah. I know okay. but i but it it it, it didn't uh, it won't play it says it won't play on my on my kindle oh. huh. however it does play on my uh, on my computer here on my mac so oh, i was good. able to mm -hmm. able to read it too my grandchildren. Uh, <laughs> uh, hey, uh, Tom, good seeing you again. Always good seeing you. And as for Jeff, uh, uh, always wonderful to hear from you as well. Kevin. Going to try to make it home tomorrow. Uh, yeah, you, oh, you have a, have, a, have, a, have a good time trying that one. You can see me at the airport. Yeah, yeah. It was snowing <laughs> all day today. All day. How was it down there, uh, Rob? We had snow all day, but it tapered off, and I think we got no more than like four or five inches. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I'll check the depth of the snow here once I, if I can pull my dick out, I could get a better reading on it. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yes, uh, Kevin, thank you. Uh, of course, uh, always thank you to Tim for calling, um, and of course Rob and Bob Eberth and Ray Renati. Uh, this has been uh, been a lot of fun tonight. And also Phil, we have to say, Phil, the trooper that he is, was here. Uh, why don't you all uh, give a big, uh, big wave goodbye so these people can see your lovely faces. And hopefully we'll see you again tomorrow night. Bye-bye.
That's our citizens panel for tonight, folks. It's a very simple little uh, little process we have here. And you can be part of the citizens panel. Just go to gabnet.net and it will tell you everything you need to know about doing that. In the meantime, stay tuned next for the uh, for uh, the intersection with Jack and Amy. That's followed at 1 o'clock this morning by Connections. And that will be followed tomorrow night if he's hasn't got car problems again with uh, uh, our, uh, our good friend Damian Chaplin with The Exchange. And then I'll be back again tomorrow night at 10. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, as always, I'm stalling until I get my hand in the right place. Tell her I love her. Okay, bye. <laughs>